Welcome back to Let's Clone. My name would be Stephen French, and this is hopefully a short little video inspired by a game jam I just recently did. We uh, did a game jam, me and a buddy of mine who does the art for some of my other jams. We did a try jam. Try jam was a three hour of development jam. You could spend all the time you want planning everything out before that. We had three hours to code it. So the theme was um, evil is more fun, I believe. And I've been wanting to code Conway's Game of Life for a really long time, ever since I heard about it in university, I don't know, 2010, something like that. So I figured I'd do that. I was going to code Game of Life and then try to find a way to turn it into a game. It wasn't great, but I did it, and I had a lot of fun making Game of Life, so I figured I'd make a quick part on how to do that. I don't know, it's just an awesome little cellular automaton sim simulation-esque thing. Read more about it if you don't know about it already, but we're going to code it, make some neat little patterns on the screen. Let's go. So, we're going to make a arbitrary sized game room. By arbitrary, I mean I'm deciding it. Oh, snap. 600 by 600. Bingo, bango, zingo, zango. We're going to create an object, as I always do. This is just going to be a system. And we're just going to pop that into them. Savannah, I can't. I, can't I, I was petting you all day. I can't be just dropping the extra pets. It doesn't really matter where we put that. Although, I really like for it to be in the corner. So, it, it's going to be in the corner. Uh, we don't need any sprites for this one. Uh, this, again, should be pretty simple. So what Conway's Game of Life is, it is a grid, DS grid, because fuck, if you haven't watched this channel, it's all I goddamn use. It is DS grid in which any of these cells has one of two states that it can be in, either alive or dead, one or zero, however you want to think about it. There are very few, very few conditions that regulate what changes can be made, how one can come alive or become dead, I guess be born or killed, semantics. So we're going to make up a grid that covers this whole room, and then we're going to give it that chance of conditions. Pretty much how it works is if a cell is dead, it's going, well, what they all do is they look around themselves to their eight potential neighbors and they count how many of those cells are alive. If a cell is dead and it has exactly three living neighbors, it will come to life. Now, if a cell is alive and it looks around, it needs to have either two or three living neighbors for it to stay alive. In any other situation, it dies. So let's start off with uh, actually a script, just because I, I like using this new ability to convert to D&D. Come on down here and make a macro. So I'm going to be doing a, a square grid, so I'm only using a grid size. I don't care for it to be a grid height and grid width. If you want to make a different size, do that. Name. Right, so we have our two different, I guess, potential states for alive which is equal to one, and for dead, which is equal to zero. That is not how you do that. There we go. Now do I want, yeah, I guess we'll make this a macro as well. We're going to do cell size is equal to eight. I'm just gonna do eight by eight pixels so we can see them on the screen. Um, and I, I, I guess we'll, I don't want this one to be macro because we might, we might wanna play with it later. But yeah, that's what we need. These, as I've said in previous videos, they are immediately checked by the game at compile, and we can use them anywhere in the code. But I'm gonna name it macros. Now come down into our system. We need to actually create two DS grids, so it's an exciting day. Uh, initialize grid. We're gonna do little, little grids for game of life. Now I want grid to be equal to DS grid create and we won't need this to be grid size by grid size as you can see they're red because the macros are registered um, I really should have named these better and I should do so now because I'm writing it now but I I don't I don't, I don't care too much about that we just have grid for our main grid and our grid underscore this is just holding the the uh, future positions so every time that we check how many neighbors there are, we can't update the grid itself because then you'll be changing the state of one cell before the next cell has a chance to consider it as its neighbor. So we're gonna do all of the check into a second grid. After we're done checking every cell, we're going to replace the first grid with the second grid and then just kind of keep going on from there. So we have our grid, everything is default set to zero. That is just how DS grid create works. So every cell is inherently dead. Now we need a variable where we can keep track of how many neighbors are around. We're gonna set that to zero by default. And we need to trigger a, a cycle for this to like, 
I, I don't want it to happen every frame because then shit just happens a little bit too fast. So I want to slow it down a little bit. We're going to use an alarm for that. So we're going to say alarm zero. That's not how I do it. Is equal to, and then, uh, oh my God, I'm fucked. There we go. Alarm zero is equal to cycle, which this is what I considered putting in the, the macro list and we didn't, so we got to do it now. We can do cycle is equal to, I think I was doing eight, eight frames. Yeah, that seemed to work for me. And that's just going to be every eight frames, we're going to run this alarm. That alarm is where we're going to run our check, count up our neighbors and bring to life or kill some cells. And then, yeah, we're going to look at, at some patterns. Let's go into our draw event so we can draw set patterns. Uh, draw living cells. Nope, nope, not, not doing well today. Um, so we're going to do this in a nested loop. So two different for loops. We're going to have four variable x, x is equal to zero. God damn it, Steven. x, x is less than grid size. And then x, x plus plus. We're going to do the same thing along the columns, checking our four variable y, wow, seven, seven is equal to zero. YY is also less than grid size, and YY also plus plus. Okay, so we're looping through every single cell. So now we need to check if the cell is living or dead, and we got to do just two different types of drawing. We can either draw a solid yellow square if it's alive, or just a black outline if it's dead. So we're going to check if grid, using our accessor at position XXYY, it's equal to alive, which we could just check if grid, because if it's alive, it's one, it'll count as true. But I like to be able to read it this way a little bit better. We're going to set, no, draw set color to see yellow. Use whatever colors you would like. And let me tab this in. Then we're going to draw set rectangle. What did I spell wrong? Draw, no, no, nah, I don't gotta set it. I just gotta draw it, draw a rectangle. I want to be able to see, I like to be able to see that so I can tell what my order is. Um, and oh, damn it, I did it again. I keep forgetting that my laptop is tiny, so I, I gotta make this bigger. So we're going to draw at XX times cell size. So we scale all the way across instead of just drawing at like the eighth pixel or when we're eight cells in, in whatever. We're gonna draw multiplied by the cell size. So we have whatever iteration in that array or rather the width of the array currently and then multiply it by the cell size. So we're actually at the correct position on the screen. I'm gonna come down here to YY, same thing times cell size. And then we need to, whoa, why'd you do that? We need a, oops, XX times cell size we need to add another cell size because now we are at the position we need to be, but we want to draw it at its own width. So we're just adding those eight more pixels to it. Same thing for the height times cell size plus cell size. Uh, almost. Well, we can do that. Ah, comma. Now we're going to give it a zero for this right here outline. We want it to be a solid. I'm going to copy this because. I love copy paste. Um, we only have two conditions, so we can just do an else here. We don't have to check if it is dead. We're going to change this over to C black. Everything else will be the same except for we want it to be an outline. Now, first, I want to change the color of the background of the room because if that is uh, black, we're not going to see the outline. If it's yellow, we're not going to. Yeah, we're not going to see the cells very well. So let's go with. Uh, a uh, nice, almost pinkish gray. I don't fucking know. Just pick, just pick a color. Pick color, any color. Right now, all the cells are dead. That's fine. I just want to uh, see them. We're going to do one thing before we get into actually having the simulation run by itself. We need a way to actually initialize this because if everything's dead, nothing will ever be born. So we're going to have the mouse take care of that for us. But we have a grid. It is printing all of the outlined squares working flawlessly and my computer's ramping up because this thing is garbage. No, I didn't want to close that. There we go. Back into our system, give ourselves a bit of a step event. 
I do not need a begin step. Uh, can we change it? Change event. Step event. Regular step event. Let me put things in it. We're going to add slash remove um, living cells. We're uh, yeah sure. We're going to check if uh, mouse. Uh, I guess we're not doing. I, I did a toolbar on another app that I'll show you guys later, so I don't need to do that. If um, I don't really need position meeting. So yeah, we're gonna just do mouse check button pressed. That'll be mouse button left. So if we click, we're going to say that grid or accessor at xx. No, not xx. Mouse x. We're going to divide that by cell size so we get its place in the grid and not its actual x coordinate on the screen. Then mouse y, not a capital, divided by cell size is equal to alive. We're going to then check if we have clicked the right mouse button. And we're going to do in the same coordinate, mouse x, mouse y, divided by their cell size. Div as opposed to doing a, a forward slash, or is it back? Forward slash, I believe, whatever. Instead of doing slash, it uh, drops the remainder. So we just have the whole number and we don't have to worry about getting close to the cell and having this be like, oh, that's not an actual position. So now we should be able to draw living, oh, darn it. We're gonna change this one to dead because we don't, we, we don't want that. And for now, I'm actually going to get rid of draw button pressed. We're just gonna draw the button. So whenever click is held left or right, we're doing performing this action, either bringing to life or killing the little cells. Coffee time. All right, so we hold click, we move around. It's obviously not fast enough to draw a line and keep up with us, but that's all right. Hold right click, you can delete these. We're gonna quickly add another variable though. We're gonna say pause is equal to false. We're gonna give it a pause, oh, I do that all the time. We're gonna give it a, a pause option with the space bar and uh, you'll see how that all works later. We also need that alarm. Um, uh, edit cell. Here we'll do a quick uh, restart game so we don't have to. Yeah, we'll do it. If keyboard check, I, I'm nailing it. Pressed. I'll go back and fix that. Virtual key is copy. If keyboard check, press that. Game restart. Now thinking of more things ahead that I forgot to do that will touch quickly, but whatever. Uh, and then here we want to pause slash play player. If keyboard check pressed virtual key, we'll do a space, why not? Um, actually need a couple lines of code here, but we want pause to be equal to not pause. We're going to say before that, if we are currently paused and we're turning it to, to not pause, then we're gonna need to re-trigger our alarm that we don't even have yet, but just follow along, it's fine, it's fine. Cycle, equal cycle, good. So as we always do, escape restarts the game, little debug feature, play and pause. If you hit space, we are taking pause. If it is true, we're setting it to not true, which is false. If it's false, we're setting it to not false, which is true. If it was true, so the game was paused and we turn it to unpause, we need to trigger this alarm so it can happen, so then it can keep happening. The alarm's gonna, I guess, recursively call itself. Um, one, actually, we, I was thinking I needed to randomize, but we don't need to randomize, so don't worry about that. We don't have to worry about this yet until we're in the next thing. Pausing, playing, all that jazz, I believe. Good. Now, the alarm is where everything is, is going to happen. This is where Conway's Game of Life actually begins. Um, what am I going to call it? I don't know what to call this, but it's important. Yep, that looks good to me. Now we need whoop, a little bit more room. Just like in our draw event, we need to loop. Ah, speaking of which, draw event. I don't feel like typing, so womp, control, 
paste and get rid of this. Now let me actually bring up the map that we have so far so I can explain what this step will be doing. Uh, we need to look at all of the neighbors around it. There's a whole bunch of different ways. You can code out eight different checks. So let's say that this guy is alive. We need to check the eight cells that are around him. Now you could do a check for the top left and the top middle and the top right and the left and the right and the bottom left and the bottom middle and the bottom right. But that's a lot of writing the same code. So we're just going to run. I wish I could zoom in on this, make it a little bit bigger. Um, maybe in post I'll do that. But we're going to run a little bit of an another set of nested loops inside of these nested loops where we're going to start one position before and one position above. And then we're going to go through checking through those iterations of boop, 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 boop. This guy we're actually checking, but we got to remember to ignore because we don't want to count ourselves as a neighbor. Boop, 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 boop. And then we're going to do that little left to right scan, top to bottom scan inside of this massive left to right, top to bottom scan. We're going to do that with four loops. So check thy neighbor for variable. We're going to do I's and J's this time is equal to XX minus one uh, for as long as II is less than or equal to XX plus one II plus plus. So that is checking uh, across our, yeah, across the row. Then we need a four variable JJ is equal to YY minus one. We're doing the exact same thing we did before, but in the other direction. Uh, for as long as JJ is less than or equal to YY plus one, JJ plus plus. Now we are looking at every cell around the neighbor. We need to do a couple things. We need to we'll just check pretty much if that cell is alive and then add it to our neighbor or our neighbor list. But every time we get into this loop right before it, we want to reset our neighbor neighbors to zero so that way we don't get like the one cell has 10 neighbors and then or 10. One cell has two neighbors, one next to it ends up having three, but we retain that two, so we add it to it, now we has five, and that, that's just wrong. So always reset the neighbors to zero. Now we're checking again. If grid at accessor xx y whoa 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 my guy slow down i i j j is equal to alive if i could spell neighbors plus plus when we are done with this loop we can't quite be confident that like we have the correct count because at one point x or i i and j j will be equal to x x and y y we'll be counting ourselves so we just need to take neighbors and minus equal grid. That's not what I did. Grid accessor at XXYY. So the neighbor or the cell that we're paying attention to and checking the neighbors of, we need to get rid of himself as a counter. So we could just minus one because actually no, that would only be if that cell is alive. If he's dead, we're going to be subtracting zero. Nothing has changed. If he is alive, then we need to subtract one. So that's what this little bit of a check does. And now we have a correct amount of neighbors posted. Oh, well, I guess stored. So we need to figure out what to do with that cell just in case. Now, this is where our other grid is going to come into play because we don't want to just upgrade this grid's position. So every time we get into this page, I actually, this page, this alarm, the first thing I want to do is clear a secondary grid because we don't want to remember the positions of the pre pre blah, 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 previous evolution. We want to know brand new what is happening this time around. So we're going to do, uh, I think I have to do it like this. Grid is equal to ds grid clear. I don't know if I need to set it equal to or not, but we'll figure it out. Uh, grid underscore, which is the ID, and then we're giving it the value of zero. I just want to check this real quick. If you middle click on any function, you come to this page, or if you press F1 while you're on it, but I just want to get an example, DS grid clear. Good, I actually don't need to set it yeah, like this. So we are clearing the secondary grid, grid underscore, setting everything in there to zero. Now, we need to check if the cell is alive or if it is dead, and then we need to give it the conditions to the appropriate conditions for what it needs to do. So you're going to do if grid, Currently, uh, wait a minute. 
I need to do this inside of here because we got to look at each grid and then figure out what it's going to do there. Um, so check thy neighbor and then set thyself. If grid at uh, x, x, y, y is equal to alive. Again, we don't actually need to write that because alive is just one, which is equal to true. So if the cell is alive, there are two conditions in which it can stay alive. So we're going to say if neighbors is equal to two, or if neighbors is equal to three. Those are the only conditions in which a cell can, can remain living. If so, we're going to update our secondary grid at that exact same position of x, x, y, y to be alive. So if the regular grid is alive, he has the right number of neighbors, he's going to be alive. We don't need to set it to false otherwise because again, we've cleared this array, so it's already by default set to zero. So setting it back to zero wouldn't really help us too much. But we just do, do need to check if it's going to be alive in the next frame. So now we're gonna check for our dead boys on our regular grid, which is why I should have given them better names, but I apologize. Please name them something else if you think that that would have been confusing for you by now. Is equal to dead. If this boy ceases to live, there is only one condition that, that can bring him to life, and that is if he has exactly three neighbors. So if neighbors is equal to three. If so, grid, whoop, Secondary grid, god damn it, god damn it. <laughs> Secondary grid at x, x, y, y is equal to alive. If there is zero, one, two, four, five, six, seven, or eight neighbors, he's just gonna stay dead. Again, the cell's already set, excuse me, set to zero, so we don't have to worry about it. And now we should have a correctly populated next grid. So we need to do a uh, grid is equal to ds, Grid, I think it's called grid copy. Yeah. Well, maybe I don't need to do this part. So we need to overwrite first grid with secondary grid. We're pretty much updating to next evolution cycle. We can call it either of those, whatever you want. Now, if you click on this boy, with that there middle click or that there mouse. Uh, that is create. All right, so DS grid copy, you're taking your first grid and your second, you're adding it, or ha, ah, destination. So the index of the grid to, be, uh, to copy to and the index of the grid to copy from. I guess that's an easier way to read it. So we have our grid, our regular grid, and then we have our secondary grid. So we're copying everything from here over to here. Now, I guess you could clear the secondary grid after this happens, but we're already clearing it at the start of the screen, so it doesn't matter much to me. Now we need to continue this cycle, but we have that pause condition to pay attention to. So if we are not paused, I don't actually need to space that out because there's only one line of code. Alarm zero is equal to cycle. And that, that really should be it. So we should be able to pause the game and then click around and then unpause the game. Um, there's plenty of ways that you can play with that. You can either draw a different colored outline when it's paused so you can tell, oh, we're actually gonna have an issue. There's one condition we need to check for, and uh, as you can see, if I run the game, it is gonna throw us a little bit of an error down here. It's nothing super problematic, but uh, it's just an out-of-bounds exception. And I'll explain as to why that's happening. So if I pause the game and I place a space, now our, our little tiny nested loop, it's gonna check first up in this position, which is obviously off the grid. Same thing if we're over here or up here or down here. So we just need to let it know to ignore anything that is outside of the bounds of the, the major grid itself. So here we are doing that loop, we're doing that loop, and we need to do a if ii is uh, greater than or equal to zero, and I think these all need to be ands, ii is less than um, grid size. Since grids start counting from zero, grid size will be one cell too big, so we don't need to less than or equal to. And jj is greater than or equal to zero, same thing, and then the same thing again, and jj is less than grid size. And that should exclude our, our like our faulty checks, I guess, or our out of bounds checks. 
So now we have checks and balances. And that should be no longer printing anything negative to us. Now, if you just click, it's going to create a cell and then immediately destroy it because he has no neighbors. That's why, I have a, that's why we have a pause button. So if we have a pause button, you can create a few cells and there are a few, I guess, kind of special ones. Well, there's a whole bunch. If you Google them, you're going to find a, a plethora. But if you got four, that is a stable, a stable situation because each one has enough neighbors to remain, but none of the outside uh, dead cells have enough neighbors to come alive. This is similar, except for it has one frame in which this cell will come alive. If I press space, it becomes a square. Now it's stable. We have, uh, I guess it's called a frog, this little Z. It's just going to start, oh, that's not. This is one of the stable shapes. But why, what is the frog? Is it three of them? Boop, boop, boop. It, uh, overlap, overlap. Yeah, this is the frog. And he just kind of, I don't know why they call him a frog. It's not quite frogish, but yeah. This guy's neat because if you hit one of the tops, he, he goes through his whole little cycle and, and that's kind of a fun one. We have also, if I pause it quick, if we do a there, 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 and there, and you can rotate this 90 degrees in any direction, this is called a glider. He's actually going to shimmy across the board. Let's uh, let's come down into our, our macros. Did I put the cycle here? I didn't. I keep... Whoa, whoa. Go into our create and we take our cycles instead of doing it every eight frames we do it every two frames then uh, we're just going to speed everything up a little bit yeah now you can go buck wild draw a bunch of stuff it's not a very pleasant draw experience because i don't know i didn't try to make it too great but we will put also boop 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 in the little glider here hit play and you can watch the whole thing unfold. But that is Conway's Game of Life. Play around with this. You can have a whole bunch of fun making different patterns. I have built a Conway's Game of Life software, I guess. I will link to my itch.io upload for that. Um, it's a lot of fun. I'll show you in just a second. So this is a another Game of Life, I guess more of a software that I've written than in, it's not really much of a game. But I've added a lot of, of functionality to it just to have a little bit more fun. I've given buttons to everything. You can actually put different patterns down with the click, hit play, and watch all of the chaos ensue. It's a solid fun time. If you put all of them, you can just see some, some really neat patterns. You can change the speed of, of how everything works, slowing it down, speeding it up. Uh, it, it, it's great. I've, I've looked at this for far too long. You can change the colors of everything. Right now, I have a very potentially dangerous oh, right now I'm, I'm working on it at the moment I, it was just picking random colors and it gets really obscure but uh it might be seizure inducing so probably better that it didn't work but yeah economy's game of life is a blast again you can play this on itch i'll upload it for that and then keep everything there it it was a great little fun thing to code and i also encourage you to go into the code itself and play around with some of these conditions I think I coded this one a little bit different. But if I, if you, say if you take the, the death condition and you make it, if it's anything greater than or equal to three, so there's a really high chance that he's gonna stay alive. But here, now you're gonna see, let's speed this up a little bit, that the patterns are gonna last a lot longer and they fill a lot more of the screen. Before this, the simple X, it, it died down pretty quick. But now there's some, some hecticness going on. And I think it's kind of fun to change everything. I don't know. I made this, I had fun with it. I look at it for way too long, probably gonna fry out my brain. So there you have it, Conway's Game of Life and a little, I guess, application that I made so you can play around with some more of the variables and see if you want to recreate that for yourself. I had a lot of fun making it. I have a lot of fun staring at that screen, just looking at crazy little patterns. I don't know, I think it's a pretty good time. It was a, a fun challenge and uh, it was great for this little three hour jam. That took me about an hour to figure out how to make Conway's Game of Life and to actually get it working. And then it took me a couple hours to turn it into a little game. I guess I'll put the link for, for that pretty shitty game in the description as well. It's, it's not super fun, but it was fun to make. That's about it. This is Let's Clone, Conway's Game of Life. My name would be Stephen French, and we'll keep uploading these videos. Having, having a job.